or this one is too much. But please, I have one request, and that is for this video to get to as many people as possible. This is spirit at a nation well, where slaves drink and lost their memory. Now, let them tell a story about slavery. Um, there's a man called Williams Abbas Seriki, right here. He was one of the slave merchants. And we have their museum, right, in this Badagri. This particular person, the first time I learned about his story, I was like, what? If I remember, was actually a slave boy who the slave masters picked when he was six years old. They took this guy, they sold him to the first master, a black man, sold him to the second master, a white man. All through his life, just imagine a boy of six years old. Like, all through his life was slave. Slavery was all he knew. Slavery was all he knew as a person. Imagine picking somebody up while he was six years old, taking this guy to different parts of the world. All he knew was slavery. This guy was privileged to go to school. Slavery, slaves don't go to school. But this particular man had a privilege of going to school. That means there's something special about him. And him going to school is not because he's special. There are other slaves who also go to school. So he's one of the special slaves who, who, who receives special treatment from their masters. But after some while, his master told him that, Williams, I would like you to come to Nigeria. He was in Europe. Come to Nigeria and establish a business. You'll be in charge of the business. He took the opportunity. Now, the thing is that this guy was a slave all through his life. Now he had the opportunity of coming to his fatherland to extend the business of slavery, which is what he knows in his whole life. And he took the opportunity and came back here. He was one of those people who make this route one of the most profitable routes. This is where the slave cried, weeping. They don't even have any hope of going back to their loved ones. You know, why they are crying, why they are in chains, why they are going to a place they don't even know about. They don't even know what is after them. They came from a slave cell which they have stayed there for more than if I, for several, several months in agony, in pains. I have the documentary, you can go to my channel and, and check it out. They went through that pain and agony just to walk on this road in chains, hungry, starving. They come here, when they see this water, they take the water with happiness as if the slave masters were doing them a favor. They lose their memory and they go. But you know, why they are going? The only thing they have in mind the only wish they have is the fact that those people they left behind, their children, their fathers, their parents, their siblings, for them to have a better life than they, are, than they have. They go. And today, we have Africans in different parts of the world who can't even trace their roots anywhere because they don't know where they come from. That's to show you that it's not just a story. It happened. Like, it's, it's a real story. Now, to today, Africa, to my generation, to African today. You know, when I make these videos, I see reaction. This is what I got. Telling me this, telling me this, telling me this, telling me this, tell, telling me this. We're all crying. They brought Christianity. They brought religion. They brought this. They brought that. Why taking our people? Taking our natural resources to, their, to develop their own fatherland. And we are shallowing in poverty. But the question is that, is that not today's reality? Let's be honest with ourselves. Is that not today's reality? Although, we are not in chains anymore. We don't have chains in our neck, in, in our hands, in our leg. We are free men. But do we think freely as a people? When you see me, you want to know where I come from. If I tell you that, okay, I'm from the eastern part of Nigeria. You are from the western part of, of, of Nigeria. Already, you are seeing a different person. But when you look at my skin, you are seeing yourself there. And woman will tell you that they, they can trace their origin to the Jewish. Yeah, someone will tell you a different story about where they come from. But when you look at, uh, uh, but when you look at each other, you are seeing a reflection of yourself in an outside man. You are seeing a reflection of, of yourself in the Yoruba. But you claim that the Jewish are your friends. It's not about in the tribe. Like this is to tell you that if you truly want to revenge this sad story of our people, then you should start by addressing the fact that Today, when you do that your Yahoo boy, that your Yahoo, and you cash out, this clothes that you wear is given 
the people that you feel that they, they put you, they, they suffer your brothers. This thing you're, you're wearing is giving food to the Europeans. When you cash out, when you become the Odogu, the next thing you're looking at to buy Mercedes Benz, buy a lot of luxury cars, which in return give job to the Europeans. And you are there, shallowing in poverty. Let me tell you, today you have cars, you are living well, you are comfortable, but I can tell you that as a Nigerian, I have seen a lot of people who had all these things 10 years ago, today, they are in the worst level of life. Is that a revenge for you? I have a lot to say in this video. I have a lot to say concerning this, but I will reserve my comments first. Go to Facebook, follow me on Facebook right now, because I'll be sharing my opinion on this on Facebook. We need to start thinking as people. Like, we need to start reacting to these things positively, logically, as people. We are reasonable. We are not clowns. Like, we are not clowns. We think, from, we think with our head. We are responsible people. And if you want to revenge our brothers, we should get to work. Because we have a lot of work. We have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do. And you and me are the pioneers of this job. Stand up and take action. If it or not, to if I remember Williams Abbas, it was a survivor. Believe me, a lot of people have actually gotten that offer and they said no. And he saw what happened to them. He saw everything. And he, he didn't want to be a victim. He came back and did a master's plea. All right? And he survived. Today, he's one of the richest people in Nigeria. He, like his generation. They have a lot of properties, inherit inheritance from him. I'm not against him, but I want you to actually pick a point from that story. So my very last point, if I have a leader, a good leader in Nigeria today, that will take us to that promised land, believe me, Nigerians, we don't have the quality of people that will back this good person up. Because, believe me, you, you Nigerians will see be the person that, that will castigate this good person. You Nigerians. So, there's something wrong with our mindset. There's something wrong with how we think as people, how we reason. I want to address this issue. Believe me, this has a lot to do with our background. I always tell you this thing. You and me, we are coming from two different backgrounds. And the only way I can help you is for me to understand that you are coming from a different background. I am coming from a different background. Then how will I impact what I learned from my background? And you give me what you learned so we can grow together as people. How do we do that? That is what Nigerians need to work on. I am working on, this is the slave route, right? Right here, this is where thousands and millions of our brothers walk through to an unknown destination. Slavery was a big atrocity committed against black people. I don't know about other part of the world. Now, as Nigerian youth, imagine the pain, the agony, people walking from this place and walking freely, no lotions on my neck. They might have stayed in the, in, 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 on itself for a couple of months before they would take them to a journey of an unknown destination. Now, while they're working on this particular place and working right now, Imagine the pain they have in their hearts. It's not the fact that they are being sold into slavery or they are not coming back to their home. It's the fact that the people they left behind, some of them have their children, some of them have their parents. Their cry is for them to go back to them. Or, you know, they have this, if it is the only thing they, they wish for, that is to see those people they left behind better than they are. That is the only thing they will be crying. They will only wish for. Now let me ask you. Do you think with what we have today, their wish ever come true? For more content like this, kindly follow me on Facebook. This is where we'll be discussing topic like this because this is where most Nigerians are right now. So we want to also pour our voice out there in the media. Support me by following me on Facebook right now. And also subscribe to the channel. Let's grow big.